Hello there, dear friends, and welcome back to our little house on the mountain. Today we are going to be making one of my favorite things to make, which is old-fashioned churned butter. I've made butter a few times in some of the vlogs that we've posted, and I've gotten questions, I've gotten requests to do a video on how to make butter, and I've also gotten some comments from you guys saying that you've tried to make butter in the past, but for some reason it just was not working. So today we are going to go step by step through the process of making old fashioned churned butter and we will troubleshoot some of the reasons why you may be having problems getting your cream to turn into butter. I'm very excited about this one because if you've never had old fashioned hand churned butter from grass fed cows, you've never truly tasted butter. It's amazing. And bonus, it's good for you. So let's just start with the things that you will need in your butter excursion. Of course you will need a way to churn your butter. And there are multiple ways to do this. You can simply put the cream into a mason jar, put that lid on nice and tight, and shake until you get butter. It's not my preferred method of doing it, but some people enjoy that. It's simple, it's cost effective, and you will eventually get butter. And of course the other way that you can make your butter is with a hand churner. This is the Kilner Manual Butter Churner. This one's more on the petite size. I have a small kitchen, so this has worked really well for me. This is not sponsored, but I have really enjoyed this butter churner, and it has worked very well for me. It's got wood handles, nice glass, stainless steel, and you can get this on Amazon. I will leave links to the things that I'm mentioning, if I can, in the description box and pinned in the comments below. Of course you could find a vintage or an antique butter churn. A lot of those are much bigger and a lot of times the paddles will be made out of wood. If you can find one that's in good condition, not rusty, your crank is working nice and smooth, why not? I've known people who have found them in grandma's attic, cleaned it up and it's worked really nicely for them. So there are definitely options when it comes to your hand cranks. And then of course there is the classic butter barrel with the wooden stick inside. I'm sure we've all seen pictures from the good old days where the woman was sitting on the porch and she was moving that wooden dowel up and down inside her butter barrel to agitate the cream and make lots of butter for her family. And I know from some of the research that I've done that a lot of women from back in the good old pioneer days, they would set aside a whole day just to process the dairy that they got from their dairy cows. And so they would spend a lot of time one day a week churning their cream into butter. So the next thing that you will need, of course, is your cream. And this might be one of the things where we can troubleshoot for those of you who have had issues turning your cream into butter, you need to make sure that it is in fact cream. Not half and half, not milk, but cream. You can obviously just go to the store, you could get yourself some whipping cream, you, you would be able to make that into butter. If you purchase raw milk, you could put it into a glass container, you wait a day or so and the cream will rise to the top and then you can scoop your cream off and put that aside and you can make that into butter. So really, those are the two main things that you need to make butter. Cream, not milk or half and half, but good old cream, and something to agitate or churn that cream so that the buttermilk separates from the fat and you are left with buttermilk and butter. Lots of doggy and chicken noises. That's just how it goes around here. But the other things that you will need is cold water. And if you can't get your water cold enough, you may have to use ice. That's what you're gonna use to rinse the butter. And if you want to salt your butter or herb your butter, those things are optional. Then you will want something like a sea salt or a pink salt and anything else that you want to put in your butter to make it tasty or pretty. But it is really that simple. Cream, something to agitate your cream, cold water, and possibly salt. We're blurry. We're still blurry. Come on, you can do it. There we go. So for those of you who are like me and you like to overcomplicate things for the purposes of nostalgia, 
You could get yourself an antique butter mold. I've seen them at antique shops, um, secondhand shops. I've seen them on Etsy. Uh, I've seen some new ones also butter molds, but you could keep it totally simple. And when you're done making your butter, you can just shape it into a lumpy stick of butter or into a ball to put away to store. It will be delicious no matter what shape it's in, but I thought I would add that in just in case anyone else is into these things like I am. All right, so let's head into the kitchen with our cream and our butter churner. I will say this right before we get started because this could also be a troubleshooting issue for those who have had issues with making butter. If your cream is too cold, it will take so long to churn the butter. I made this mistake the first time I did it and regretted it very, very much because it shouldn't take an insane amount of time to churn your butter. When you first start doing it, it's gonna feel like, wow, this is definitely a little bit more of a process than just maybe buying butter from the store. Even though, like I said, there's nothing like hand churn butter, but it shouldn't take this crazy absorbent amount of time. If it's taking too long, either it wasn't cream or uh, the other potential is that it was too cold. So typically what I will do is I will take it out and I'll let it sit. Uh, I usually do about an hour. Some people will do half an hour, 45 minutes, up to an hour. Let it come to closer to room temperature. It makes it so much easier to churn and a much shorter amount of time, like 15 to 20 minutes it will take me if I let it get to the right temperature. I know from the research that I've done when women would churn with those big butter barrels and the wooden stick that they would move up and down, that took them about half an hour. So you should not be sitting there with your churner laboring for 45 minutes. If you're doing that, it's possible that either uh, it wasn't pure cream that you were using or the cream was too cold and it is just taking a million years. Okay friends, so here we are, here we go. I'm gonna let this sit for just a little bit longer and then I'll get right back with you guys and I will show you step by step how your cream is going to look at each step of the process as you are churning your butter. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. So while I'm waiting for that cream to come to just about room temperature, I thought I would share a few measurements with you so that you'll know how much butter your cream is going to get you. One quart of cream will get you approximately one pound of butter in two cups of buttermilk because when you're making hand churned butter, you're not just getting butter, you're also getting buttermilk, which you can save and use in things like pancakes, biscuits, and other yummy things. Two cups of cream will get you approximately what we would think of as one stick of butter and one cup of buttermilk. Okay friends, so I am just clicking on my top as so. You want to make sure to not fill your jar all the way to the top with your cream because as you are churning, your cream is going to fluff up a bit. So it's going to end up expanding and filling more of the jar than you start with. As you're making your butter, your cream is gonna go through a couple different stages. And as I'll show you, this is going to fluff up almost like it's starting to become whipped cream. So I'm gonna start my churning. You wanna go at a decent, consistent pace. You can obviously switch hands when you need to or get help. I know I have a lot of friends whose kids find this an amusing activity, so that's always a great way to uh, have give them something to do for a period of time. But I'm gonna just start my churning and as the cream starts to do what it needs to do, I will show you what it looks like or what it's supposed to look like in the different stages. And of course, this is a great time to be able to sit, pray, think of things you're grateful for, put on an inspiring YouTube video or some sort of a teaching. So we can always double our time and use it wisely. So I'm about a quarter of the way through, and as you can see, the top of the cream is looking a little bit frothy. So I'm gonna continue to churn, and I will let you know what happens next. As you're getting towards the end, you're gonna notice a couple things. One, you might notice a few bubbles starting to form. You're definitely going to notice that it's going to be a little bit harder 
to churn. It's gonna feel like you're churning against the current. And I noticed that my cream will start to get a little bit more of a buttery yellow color. So you can see the air pockets there. And we see the butter starting to separate from the buttermilk. And then suddenly it's going to feel smoother again. And you're gonna say, oh no, what happened? But nothing is wrong. It's just that your butter is starting to separate out. Keep going. So this is now getting tougher again to churn. So it's smoothed out for a couple minutes. And now it's getting tougher. You can see the butter is beginning to separate out. I'm gonna do a few more turns. There it is. You can see the miracle of butter forming. So I'm gonna go grab my bowl of cold water, some wooden spoons to squeeze the butter between, and a jar with a filter and a funnel to pour my buttermilk into. So if you want to save your buttermilk, what you're going to do is get a jar. I like to use a funnel so I don't make a big mess. I'm gonna unclamp this. Then with a nice mesh drainer, I'm going to pour this into here and collect any of my butter that's in the jar while separating it from my buttermilk. I'm gonna let my butter drain into here for a moment. I'm gonna press it down. Oopsie, got butter flying, buttermilk spilling. Just gonna press my butter down, strain off as much of that buttermilk as I can. Plop your butter in your cold water. You'll notice the water's gonna become cloudy. That's just the buttermilk coming off of here. Again, if you have butter paddles, you can use those. I'm just gonna use two of my wooden kitchen utensils. Give it a squeeze. Squeeze out that buttermilk. You might wanna change your water a couple times. Typically, I'll only have to do it about twice. I know some people say it takes five or six times, but typically I only have to do it about two times or even once changing my water if I allow the buttermilk to drain off when I first filter off my buttermilk. I'm going to pat this down just to get the excess moisture and water off of the outside with a clean cloth or a paper towel. Pat that down and then I will add my salt. So here's our beautiful butter. If you have a pound of butter, you are going to want to add approximately one to two teaspoons of salt, depending on how salty you like your butter. If you're going to be using the butter for baking where you don't want it salted, then at this point you are done. You can mold your butter however you want and store it away. And that's all she wrote. Salt is also a natural preservative. So anytime you add salt to something, typically it will help it last longer. So there you have it. This will be the bottom of the butter. And what will be the top of the butter is down here where the design is. So I'm going to pop this in the fridge for a couple hours and then we will come back and I'll let you know how it goes. So now I just have to gently pop this off the mold without ruining it. So we will see how that goes. It may not be the most beautiful piece of butter art you've ever seen in your whole life, but to me it's exciting. So there it is my butter look at that beautiful color it's hard to get that in the store all right friends i hope you enjoyed this step-by-step -step video on how to make old-fashioned hand churned butter if you are interested in the written instructions for how to make this butter those will be available at www.ourlittlehouseonthemountain.com as well as the other blog posts and recipes that we have on there i will also put any links that i have in the description box and pinned in the comments below. Wanted to thank you all so much. We love you and Lord willing, I will see all of you right back here on the next video. See you then. Bye friends.